Asia Irving's diving efforts pay off against Perry Hall. Franklin's Andreas Price levitates for this catch against McDonough. Perry Hall's Kara Dietrich with the golden goal, Darius Sample uses every inch of the end zone. All coming up next on BCPX 14. Hey everyone, it's hard to believe we've made it to summer break. This show will be very special as we take the time to go back and review the top highlights of BCPS teams this school year. As fall began, the Sparrows Point girls soccer team had a huge target on their back. They were aiming for their sixth straight state championship. After finishing the season undefeated, the girls took on Smithsburg for the 1A title game. In what has come to seem routine, the Sparrows Point girls soccer team returned to Loyola University's Ridley Athletic Complex, seeking their sixth consecutive state championship. Facing Washington County's Smithsburg High, the opponent they defeated their first two years of the streak. Early in the contest, Sammy Bennett got free and put a shot wide of the goal. 14 minutes into the game, Callie Bell sends a through ball ahead for Jasmine Pinter, and she just beats Smithsburg's keeper Riley McKinnon to the ball and into the goal, putting the pointers up 1 0. That lead did not last long. The Leopards tied it up on a goal by Bailey Grove just over a minute later. But the Pointers regained the lead another minute later when Julie Lynch placed a direct kick into the back of the goal. The Pointers came close to extending their lead several times in the half. First, when Lynch sends a cross into the box that Bell gets a chance at. Moments later, Lynch again creating a chance for Alina Jerome, but her shot goes high. Then, Callie Bell, fighting through two defenders, gets off a shot that McKinnon extends to save. Late in the half, Danielle Sachurka, with a strong effort, puts a shot on goal that McKinnon punches over the crossbar as Sparrows Point took a 2-1 lead into the half. Just over three minutes into the second half, off a leopard direct kick, pointer keeper Jada Foos is called for a foul in the box, putting Smithsburg leading scorer Kara Poole onto the line. Poole delivers, tying the game 2-all. The game remained to tie until just over 10 minutes to go. Then, Sammy Bennett finds some space inside the 18, but is taken down, giving the pointers a penalty kick. With Julie Lynch in the line, the result wasn't in doubt as she puts Sparrow Point back on top 3-2 with her second goal of the game. In the final minute, Jasmine Pinter added her second goal, icing a 4-2 win. The Pointers collected the championship hardware for a state record sixth consecutive year. We will definitely be following the Pointers next season as they aim for their seventh straight title. In field hockey, two powerhouse teams matched up for the county championship, Delaney and Hereford. The teams met twice during the regular season with Hereford winning both games and the pressure was on to win a third. For the third time this season, the Delaney Lion field hockey team faced off against the Hereford Bulls, with the Bulls winning the first two games. The stakes were higher this time. The county championship was on the line. The Hereford attack was active early. Junior midfielder Chloe Parker working deep in the Lion end to get off a shot. Then Anna Brandt drove to the left of Lion keeper Ali Mercer and fired a strong shot that Mercer was able to kick wide. Next, it was Katie Martino testing Mercer with a drive from down low. Then Mackenzie McKillop flipped a pass to the front of the line goal, but the Delaney defense was able to clear. Brant was finding her spot though, 
firing a pair of shots just wide of the goal. But her third attempt was on the money, finding the short side just past Mercer to put the Bulls up 1-0 with five minutes to go in the half. Delaney responded with their most sustained pressure of the game. Audrey Dickens ahead for Lucy Jung, but Bulls keeper Sydney Lippy swats it away. Then off a Delaney corner, ball is worked around to Mae Dickens and her backhand is knocked down by Lippy. Just before the half, Katie Martino with a chip shot that comes close. The Bulls took their one goal lead into the half. Early in the second half, junior Sydney Snyder with a strike that's covered by Lippy. Then Snyder again with a drive that Lippy kicks safely away. At the other end, Brant tries to replicate her earlier success but Mercer makes the pad save. Off a Delaney corner, Zoe Herman settles and gets off a shot that Lippy kicks out, right to Kate Profrock, who directs it on goal, but the ensuing scramble goes for naught. The Lions' last chance came late, when Bridget Kelly sent a crossing pass into center, but the Lions were unable to convert and the ball rolled across the end line. As time ran out, Hereford celebrated the 1-0 win and brought the county title back to Parkton. Delaney and Hereford met again for the county championship, this time in volleyball. Here are the highlights of that title game. Two longtime rivals met for the county championship as Hereford took on Delaney. In the first set, the Bulls jumped out to a 6-0 lead behind the strong service game of Cindy Parker and never looked back on their way to a 25-19 win. In the second set, the Lions led almost all the way until Hereford took the final two points for a 25-23 win. The momentum swung Delaney's way in the third set as they pulled away to a 25-20 victory. In the fourth set, Delaney picked up confidence as they led most of the way, pulling away to a 25-17 win to even the match at two sets apiece. In the final set, the Bulls turned things around, jumping out to an early lead and taking an eventual 15-9 win to earn the county championship. Up next, we have highlights from the county badminton championships. Over the course of two days, the top badminton players in Baltimore County gathered to determine who would earn the title of county champions. In the medal rounds held at George Washington Carver Center, the best of the best rose to the top. 
In girls' singles, Parkville's BB Marcelino hoped to repeat as county champion, but had to settle for silver as in the final, Hereford's Zoe Shea took a 15-11, 15-8 win. Towson's Isabella Sabatino earned the bronze. In boys' singles, Lock Ravens' J.J. Bonta improved on last year's silver medal by taking gold this year with a 17-14, 15-3 victory over Delaney's Ben Yin. Brian Wong, also from Delaney, took bronze. In girls' doubles, Delaney's Mona and Hannah Kang repeated as county champs with a 15-5, 15-3 win over the Parkville team of Zanab Bibby and Shalise Clark. The Western Tech team of Weinstock and Maya took bronze. The Delaney team of Wilson Gao and Andrew Wang earned the title in boys' doubles with a 15-5, 15-7 straight set win over the Towson duo of Philip Guaza and Justin Trin. The Towson team of Yanji Zhang and Bill Zhao took bronze. And in mixed doubles, the Delaney team of Yang Yang Lu and Cindy Jia defeated the Towson team of Laura Roos and Kenneth Wang for the gold, with Eastern Tech's Vicky Mie and Danielle Logan earning the bronze. Moving on to basketball, Newtown and Franklin met in the county title game. The boys' county championship matchup saw Newtown looking for their first title in three years against the surprising Franklin Indians, who claimed the top spot in Division II. First quarter, Franklin junior Ben Murphy drains a three from the corner. But Martez Robinson finds the range for three for the Titans. Murphy jacks another three attempt, misses this one, but Quentin Conwell is there to clean up underneath. A.J. Sims, looking for some space, turns and hits as Franklin took an 11-5 lead after one. Newtown hit their stride in the second, Kyrie Johnson inside for two. Then, Andrew Mills with the steal as he takes it to the cup. Martez Robinson finds Maurice Smith in the corner. Franklin hung in, but the Titans took a 31-19 lead into the half. Newtown continued to pull away in the third, Smith driving for a layup. Darrell Collins from outside, Andy finds the mark. Franklin's Murphy hits a three. He led the Indians with 19. A.J. Sims pulls up for two of his 13 on the night. Collins hits again from outside. And Smith drives and dishes to Robinson as Newtown extended their lead. Franklin wouldn't quit though. Murphy with another three. But that was answered by Collins. Andrew Mills working in the paint. Then Mills inside again, and Newtown regained the county crown with a 65-46 win. In girls basketball, Pikesville took on Western Tech for the county title. Here are the best plays of that game. Pikesville girls basketball team returned to the county championship hoping for a different result as this year they face Western Tech. First quarter, Amaya Frazier spots sophomore guard Taylor Sawyer in the corner and she drops a three. Then Sawyer again from outside the arc and the result is the same, net. Then an errant pass and Wolverine freshman Destiny Ward takes it for two. Frazier finds Sawyer again and she drains another three and yet another. Panther defensive pressure and Francis Glover Bay with the swipe and score. Taylor Saunders with the lay-in as Pikesville took a 15-8 lead at the end of one. Second quarter. Panther fast break, Keontae Lewis with the layup. At the other end, Sydney Stokes finds Peace Azika for the bucket. Robinson along the baseline, floater for two. Then Lewis with a short J, and it drops, as Pikesville took a 25-19 lead into the half. The third quarter was all Pikesville. 
Sawyer inside to Christian Sterling for a pair. Panthers cash in on a fast break. Then Pikesville on the move again as Saunders finishes. Fourth, Stokes with the steal and she finds Ward for two. But Saunders with a block and finds Tyra Robinson who does the rest. More Panther pressure as Roberts gets the steal and takes it herself. And Roberts adds another. Pikesville earns the first county title in program history. Continuing on with our winter sports coverage, we have the highlights of the Wrestling County Championships. Varsity wrestlers in Baltimore County gathered at Newtown High School for the County Championship Tournament. At 106 pounds, Damon Tiller of Owings Mills earned a point on an escape in the second period and held on to defeat Lansdowne's Riley Bozeman 1-0. Owings Mills earned their second individual championship at 113 as Alex Dufour scored a major decision over Sparrow's points, Wayne Brooks, 12-2. The 120-pound bout was a classic, as Lock Ravens' Marquise Kemp earned a 4-3 ultimate tiebreaker win in overtime against the points, Matt Fouts. At 126, Eastern Tech's Ryan Wagner earned his third county title, pinning Overly's Jerome Von Zaya at 1 minute 6 seconds. Sparrows Point earned their first individual championship at 132 pounds as Danny Davis earned a 6-2 decision over Lansdowne's Jacob Lipscomb. At 138, Owings Mills, Phil Smith had a commanding lead over Milford Mills, Jabias Barr, before getting the pin at the 318 mark. The Eagles picked up another weight class at 145 as Machiavelli Amaya earned a 10 to 1 major decision over Kenwood's Dalen Duncan. Delaney Sam Block held on to take a 7-6 decision over Woodlawn's Joel Turner Rogers at 152 pounds. Owings Mills, Roel Nunu earned his second county title, pinning Sparrow's points, Jake Lohr at the 436 mark. At 170, Hereford's Jimmy Kells needed just 35 seconds to dispatch Sparrow's points, Jake Rollo, and earn his second county title. In the 182-pound bout, Owings Mills, DeAndre Space defeated Woodlawn's Justin Briscoe in a 5-1 decision. At 195 pounds, Woodlawn's Antonio DeShields scores a late takedown to take a 3-1 decision over Alex Carr from Sparrows Point. The 220-pound bout was also decided by a late score, this time in overtime, lifting Franklin's Elijah Solomon to a 3-1 decision over Western Tech's Ike Kalu. In the final bout at 285, Parkville's Demetrius Daniels earns a 5-2 decision over Nick Shufflebein of Delaney. Up next, we have both boys and girls lacrosse county championships. 
Hereford boys and girls team made the title game. Here are the highlights of the boys game as the Bulls took on Towson. For the fourth consecutive year, it was Towson facing off with Hereford for the county lacrosse championship held this year at U.S. Lacrosse in Sparks. The Generals opened the scoring just over two minutes in. After Towson goalie Wilson Turner stopped Jack Callis on a shot five yards out, Towson's transition game kicked in, culminating in a goal by senior midi Max Burkett. That lead lasted less than a minute as Hereford attacked Jay Bowen, got inside leverage on his defender, and slipped a shot in on the short side to tie the game at one all. The Bulls took the lead two minutes later on a laser from junior attack Jake Furman. But the Bulls' lead did not last long as Towson attacked Grant Kuhn, gathered a loose ball at midfield, and converted to tie the game at two. The Generals retook the lead 30 seconds into the second quarter as midfielder James Dugan dodged the Bulls' defense and found the target. But the Bulls nodded the score at three on Jay Bowen's second score of the game. The back and forth continued when Leighton Bechtel drilled a shot into the top corner to put Towson back on top. But the general lead did not last long. In a span of 30 seconds, the Bulls tallied three times. Jake Furman added his second goal, as well as his third. And when Colt Gibbons launched this missile, the Bulls were up by two, and the Generals were left to regroup. Towson pulled one back in a hectic sequence that saw Nick Balducci stop two point-blank shots before Evan Jones got one past the Bulls keeper. But that would be Towson's final score. Jack Callis added his second goal before the half to push the Bull lead back up to two. Hereford dominated the third quarter, scoring four times on the way to an 11-5 win and another county lacrosse championship. The Hereford girls team challenged Catonsville for the county title. The Catonsville girls lacrosse team had a tough task on their hands as they faced the unbeaten Hereford Bulls for the county championship at U.S. Lacrosse's Tierney Field. But the Comets got off to a good start as just over 30 seconds in, Sophie Risk dodged the bull defense and found the far side to put Catonsville up 1-0. The Bulls responded less than a minute later as senior attack Libby May scored from a free position. Hereford took advantage of another free position attempt as sophomore Lindsey Clark found the target for a 2-1 bull lead. But 10 seconds later, Comet Mitty Lindsey Marshall found Anna Kearney open, and she converted to tie things at 2 all. Hereford then went on a four-goal run. First, Isabella Peterson scored from a free position. Then, Libby May notched her second goal of the game. Then May with her third, off a give and go with Chloe Parker. And May then fed Clark, who navigated the Comet D to put Hereford up 6-2. But the Comets fought back. Sophie Risk finds Anna Kearney eight yards out, and she converts. Then following Clark's third goal, Kearney adds her third from a free position. Another free position chance for Catonsville, and Risk finds the top corner. After junior midi Lindsay Marshall works her way in from the wing to score, the Comets had pulled back to within one at 7-6. But that was as close as the Comets would get. After taking a 10-7 lead into the half, Hereford dominated the second half on the way to a 20-9 win and the county championship. Up next, we have the presentation of a very special award. 
Mildred Murray was the coordinator of physical education and athletics for BCPS. She dedicated 43 years to promoting excellence in athletics and academics throughout the county, region, and state. She helped establish an annual countywide Scholar Athlete Award and it is named in her honor. Let's see who this year's winners are. In a ceremony held at BCPS headquarters, two senior student athletes received the 32nd annual Mildred Murray All Academic Scholar Athlete Awards. This year's female winner is Jana Roos from George Washington Carver Center for Arts and Technology. Ranked second in her class of 209 with a 4.0 GPA, Jana was a three-sport varsity athlete who competed in field hockey, indoor and outdoor track. She will attend the University of Delaware in the fall. This is a tremendous honor. Uh, Mildred Murray was an incredible woman. She made so many leaps and bounds within uh, Baltimore County, specifically for females um, in athletics. Um, and I think the support group that surrounds both academics and athletics is such a vital part of my success and my teammates' successes as well. Uh, coaches, teachers, principals, and of course family have played such an amazing role, and I'm really supportive of that. This year's male recipient is Grant Kuhn from Towson High School. Grant was a three-sport varsity athlete who competed in soccer, indoor track, and lacrosse. Academically, Grant ranked first in his class of 397. He will attend the University of Virginia in the fall. It means a lot to me. It's uh, recognition for all the work that me and my teammates have done over the past uh, four years, and um, it's kind of a culmination of everything that we've worked towards. I spend a lot of time playing sports, but I spend almost just as amount of time, or the same amount of time, um, with my academics, and it's taught me a lot of discipline. Um, I've had some great coaches that have taught me that as well. The two winners each received a plaque and a $5,000 scholarship check. The awards are presented by the Office of Athletics in honor of Mrs. Murray, the former coordinator of physical education and athletics for BCPS, who passed away in 2017. Congratulations to all of our BCPS teams for an awesome year. Before you know it, we'll be back for our fall season. Thanks for watching and have a great summer.